This is module two, section three, our final lesson, which is on the tactile system. So we've already gone over the auditory system and the visual system. Um, and the things that we learned from it is that the auditory system works according to a tonotopic map and the visual system works according to a retinotopic map. So you can probably guess which way the uh, tactile system is going to work. It's probably going to be some kind of map, and we'll get into that. Our questions for today are, um, what is the somatosensory cortex? How do we process tactile sensation? What receptors allow us to do this? And can we restore touch? Um, so just a reminder of the tonotopic and retinotopic maps. Um, as you can see, um, different areas of the auditory cortex encode for different frequencies and this is the map, this is the tonotopic map, and different areas of the visual cortex uh, correspond to different areas on the retina. Um, so for the somatosensory cortex, um, the map actually has a name, it's called the homo homunculus, homunculus. <laughs> um, so but before we get into that, the somatosensory cortex is located on the back of the parietal lobe. It's responsible for processing information about tactile sensation, including information about the uh, body position, temperature, texture, and pain. Um, so research involving stimulation of specific parts of the somatosensory cortex revealed this map that we're looking at. Um, the proportions of the map correspond to proportions of cells dedicated to that part of the body on the somatosensory cortex. So as you can see, the area for the hands is very big, and that's because we take in a lot of tactile sensation from our hands. So a larger portion of the somatosensory cortex is dedicated to that. Um, it takes inputs, so the somatosensory cortex as a whole takes inputs from three major types of receptors, and these include mechanoreceptors, thermoreceptors, and nociceptors. Um, so by now, mechanoreceptors should sound pretty familiar. Um, they're activated by physical deformation of the membrane. They sense touch and body limb position in space, um, and they have information about texture and pressure. Uh, an important note about them is that intensity of a stimulus depends on spatial and temporal summation of action potentials. So a more intense stimuli causes higher frequencies of action potentials or it causes more neurons to fire. Thermoreceptors are uh, activated based on temperature um, and we know that they have some overlap with nociceptors. So nociceptors are specialized pain receptors and they're often lightly or non-myelinated. They can be thermoactivated or mechanoactivated as high temperatures or pressures are painful. Um, we're not going to talk very much about nociceptors, but they're fascinating, so I would highly recommend looking them up. Um, so, quick review of sensory transduction uh, in these receptors. So, it begins at the receptor ending, so whether this is mechano, thermo, or nociceptor, um, the receptor receives some kind of stimulation. Uh, and this is called a touch event. It doesn't really matter like which kind of receptor it is. It's just called a touch event and it um, causes depolarization. Um, and the spiking, so the frequency of the spikes encodes for the strength of the stimulus. Um, and so how can these sense mechanical force? These are, this slide is specifically talking about mechanoreceptors. So we have deformation, so stretching of the axon can basically pop open the channel. Um, there can be a structural protein covering the mechanosensitive uh, receptor that opens a channel when it is deformed, or there can be an intracellular signaling cascade. Um, an example of a mechanoreceptor found in um, vertebrates is the piezoreceptor. Um, these are mechanical, mechanosensitive ion channels for low threshold touch in vertebrates. There are two kinds, um, and piezo 2 is the more important one for light touch sensation. So without these receptors, we wouldn't be able to feel light touch. Um, so a look at tactile sensation as a whole. It begins in the receptors. It moves through cells called the dorsal root ganglia. 
um, and the spinal cord to the thalamus and then the somatosensory cortex. This means that restoring tactile sensation is different than the other two systems we've studied because often we're not replacing receptors but whole sections of this particular circuit. Um, tactile restoration is desirable for amputees as a sense of touch informs us about our body position as well as uh, how to move more effectively in our environment. Loss of limb involves loss of recept receptors as well as parts of the dorsal root ganglia. Um, so depending on the situation, you can go differently about uh, restoring touch. So a few different ways that uh, scientists have tried to do this so far. The first is um, a spinal cord stimulator, which is what you see here. Um, and they're already used to treat chronic pain. The idea is to directly stimulate the appropriate afferents through implantation of electrodes in the spinal cord to activate the area of the somatosensory cortex associated with a particular limb. Um, and this is really tricky because localizing the signal to just the circuit associated with the limb can be difficult the further away you get from the somatosensory cortex. So another approach is to um, stimulate the somatosensory cortex directly with intracortical microstimulation, or ICMS. Uh, in this modality of restoring touch, there are sensors in a prosthetic limb that communicate with a device that is capable of stimulating the uh, primary somatosensory cortex um, through implantation or otherwise. When the prosthetic makes contacts with an object, the sensors communicate with the device, which stimulates the appropriate area of the somatosensory cortex. So in this method, most of the biological circuitry throughout the spinal cord and such is um, being bypassed. So let's just say this were a prosthetic hand. It would have uh, sensors here that communicate with these chips that are implanted or or on the surface of the somatosensory cortex here. Um, so it would be the communication between these two that ultimately causes uh, somatosensory cortex stimulation as opposed to this method where you're going through the spinal cord to uh, the somatosensory cortex. So there are benefits and drawbacks to both. Um, we haven't entirely figured it out yet in the neurotech community, but um, you know, it's definitely some very interesting things. So quick summary, uh, somatic sensation begins in mechanoreceptors, thermoreceptors, and nociceptors in the skin and throughout the body. They send messages through neurons that run up the spinal cord to the somatosensory cortex. The somatosensory cortex is organized according to a body map that dedicates higher proportions of the cells to areas that require higher discernment of touch. Restoring touch has been attempted through implanting electrodes in the spinal cord as well as directly stimulating the somatosensory cortex. Um, and in our next section, we will be talking about the motor system.